Do you not know that in the service, one must always choose the lesser of two weevils? <laughs> What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a quick review for a film that I wanted to see for some time but never got around to seeing. Um, I remember it coming out in the theaters and I don't know why I never went to see it, probably no one wanted to see it, or it wasn't one of those things that was high on anyone's list to watch, but based on the trailers it was always something that looked pretty cool and something that was on the back of my mind, checking on it periodically. Um, it was never really streaming until recently. So the movie, of course, is Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. Um, and overall, I found that the movie was pretty well done. It was very enjoyable. The hour and 40 minutes or so, or sorry, two hours and 15 minutes went by pretty quickly. Um, it was overall a good adventure story um, of a ca British captain who's going after a French ship. So the movie... Of, of obviously takes place during the Britain's war with uh, France during the late 1800s. Um, one of the comparisons that I heard about was that it was it looked a lot like Pirates of the Caribbean and because that was taking off this movie kind of suffered because of it but when you watch Master and Commander it is actually a lot better and more serious of a film than Pirates of the Caribbean and not quite and it's not even related to piracy it's related based on a war so of course it's going to be that much more serious and it's more about the day-to-day -day operations of a British ship so when you're watching it, you get all those of all the various little interactions that go on. For example, with the captain and the doctor, um, the first mate and the crew, the um, scientists and the kids, or the um, apprentices who are learning about um, measuring the distance and sun and time and all of that. Uh, deck hands, the uh, weapons crew, and all of that. So basically, a regular operations of the ship, and then what it takes for them to go after the French ship, and then also the toll it takes. So the captain, who ha is a person who <clears throat> is known as Lucky Jack, um, and generally the crew supports him, but the levels of um, trust that the, he asked them to place in him because of going after the ship the toll it takes even after the doctor is shot and all of that so in the movie paul bettany the same guy who plays vision in the mcu serves as a ship's doctor, but also as the conscience for the captain played by russell crowe so if you see paul bettany in this role you kind of see how his role transitions well as the Vision and how um, his personality works with Wanda and generally just as Vision being that supporting the supportive cast having that point of view of reason balance and all of that so all everyone's roles were played very well and you have a chance to or there's the movie gives each character a chance to grow for you to like them and get used to them and care about what all of them are doing and then you feel for the crew and as they go through the storm and that they don't really know what's going on but um they so they the point when they want to um rub um rebel and overthrow their captain but they don't so all in all it all plays out um and you see by the end of the film that transition in the captain that he was becoming Captain Ahab and, or like Captain Ahab and the whale that he was going after this friendship, which they ultimately get and they survive in battle against, but realizes the cost of doing so was higher than he wanted. So, um, all in all, a well-made film and worth the, I think, 70, at least 75 to 80% grade that it was given. So, in my opinion, if I was to grade the film, I would probably give it at least an A-, maybe even an A. 
um, just because of all the reasons I gave. I didn't really have a reason for it to be a bad film. Um, like I said, the, the movie gives the characters time to grow. The story is well done. It's very tight. They don't uh, spend a lot of time on unnecessary backstory, so they don't spend a lot of time back home or random love interests because they don't because the ship's already at sea. They already have the their instructions and all of that so they do bring it up a little bit but not to the point where they have to they do a lot of filler and backstory like okay 20 years ago this is how i fell in love and this is a love story and they didn't really bog down the film with things like that for all the various characters so when you're watching the film it's like it's, it's very tight and they fill the two hours and 15 minutes or whatever with a lot of story and progression um, and it builds up to the battle with the friendship at the end very well because you don't see the French crew until the final battle so it makes it that much more climactic and dramatic. So I definitely recommend watching it. It's currently, or as of this recording, it's streaming on Amazon Prime. So I de if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend giving it a watch. It's a good uh, one-off movie. Um, Russell Crowe and Paul Bettany play their characters very well, as do the rest of the cast. You grow and get, you want to see more of the kid who is following in the footsteps of the scientist, the first mate who commits suicide. His, made, his role is made that much more dramatic. That he has a good, keen sense, but you kind of want to know more about why he is personality that, or why he doesn't want to grow into first uh, lieutenant and things like that so like i said definitely i definitely recommend giving it a watch um it's a good movie it goes by fast and um that's really all there is to say about it so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, thoughts on the movie, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can support the show in various ways and get past episodes and all that good stuff by visiting the website at headphonesneal.com. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode.